1420.com. You know I, how I know that uh, that Robe has become a an old grizzled veteran at this? When the coaches come in and they slap on the headphones, it means they've done this a time or two. Because because you used to get spooked by headphones a long time ago. I like them now, though, because you can hear better. Isn't that an amazing thing? Yes. You're, um, I didn't get a chance to see uh, much in the fall um, as far as how you did your pitchers. Uh, am I correct in assuming your front-line guys didn't throw a ton? That's right. You and and that's uh, was that more to hey we know what you can do you threw a lot of innings last year maybe you threw during the summer and whatever and uh, how much of that was okay we got these other guys we got to see if any of these guys can help us I think all three I think uh, they threw a lot as a freshman um, we we trimmed them back to throw others a little bit more. Um, they did not throw this summer. We did shut them all down, but, uh, they did, they did have a heavy workload for freshmen and we wanted to trim them back a little bit. Plus we already knew what they could do, like you said. Um, but you know, our big thing going into the pitching was to try to come out the fall healthy because pitching, uh, position player injuries, usually you can get over them during the Christmas break and, 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 and be somewhat okay. Um, pitching injuries, it's tough. It's, it's probably a year, year and a half, especially if it's Tommy John. Right. Um, we were very fortunate to get through it. And, um, we, we felt that we, we needed, you know, hopefully two of our freshmen that were going to come in that were going to be able to pitch above their, their chronological age. Uh, and, and they did, uh, in Harris and, and Lee. So that really was good because we expected that, but you never know. Um, so both those guys came in and pitched where we needed them to pitch. Uh, they still don't have game experience, but they, they did all the things we needed to, to see from an, from a guy that we thought needed to pitch above his, above his level. Is he capable of doing that? And they both were able to do that. So that enhanced, you know, uh, Guillory and Marks, um, and, and Gunner that, that built some depth, uh, Demo, um, and then Zombreaker threw really well this fall. Uh, he threw better. Eric Carter threw better. Uh, Big Reagan threw better. He looked real good. He went out this summer and pitched in the Alaskan League. So um, our whole goal was to just try to build as, as much depth as we can because I don't think any coach in America has ever said he's got too much pitching. You, um, last year you had you know, five, I think, that you really leaned on. And then you had a couple of others that threw quite a few innings uh, for you as well but you know all of those guys return now you got a couple of freshmen that that you think are going to be able to go ahead and 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 pitch at this level at a young age um this is a, this has got a chance to be a pretty formidable pitching staff and and you know the 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 one thing i want to ask you about is specifically is hogan harris because he throws with the wrong hand and uh, he and Leja are the only two left-handers that you have. Because of the lack of left-handed pitching, do you get tempted to say, okay, guy, I'm going to have you in the pen right now so you can be a lefty, come in, throw 91 miles an hour, and, and, and get people out because I don't have one like that? Uh, that's, a, that's a very valid point. Um, and, and it also, too, will, will be decided by – We've got some other guys that have a lot of experience, but we also want him to get experience too. So, um, yeah, you have a tendency to, to look at it that way. And, um, you know, we'll sit as coaches when they return back and kind of, you know, line this out because we're going to have to try to establish some roles and, 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 and give some roles so that guys know, you know, what they're doing and, 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 uh, what they're going to be. So, uh, but yeah, I've got to agree with you on that. You know, I think he's a guy, both him and Nick Lee could close and they can start. So that's, that's where the value comes in, I think, because eventually, and it could be as fast as this year, you know, uh, they're going to be starters. Um, but, but you're right. Since we don't have a bunch of lefties, we're able to go out and get a very quality lefty out of San Jack Junior College for next year. But you're right. Um, that, that situation, uh, could show itself up, you know. And he matches up real good because he's very tough on lefties because he throws a little bit. Uh, he's got some deception, and um, but but he's handled right. He's very well too. So 
you know, again, um, it's just uh, we're very fortunate that uh, Nick and Hogan, you know, made their decisions to show up here because they could both be in pro ball right now. And uh, we're just very fortunate to have those two guys that being that young and that good. It's um, for a guy who um, whose philosophy is you can't have enough pitching and, and you got to play great defense. Do you need to carry like a paper towel around because you're drooling all the time? I mean, this, you know, the, because really, Tony, you you have a chance, okay? And I don't want to get ahead of myself. Here, yeah. But you got three starters back. You got your four top bullpen guys back. You're going to add two guys to the mix. And we haven't even talked about anybody else that you might have looked at this fall and said, ooh, wait a minute, I like this kid. Well, you've you never had that kind of depth. That I can remember. No, it's it's tough to get that kind of depth because usually <clears throat> the timing gets you. Like um, a couple years ago, we lost, you know, Austin and Baranek and those guys, the junior, the draft hits you. So right. art hits you coming out of high school. So you got it twice, you know, on the, out of high school and then again the junior year. So a lot of time it's 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 just timing, you know, too. And, and that's a hard thing to time because you also got to try to get the kid ready, too, at the same time. And then the draft – can can deplete you so it's a unique thing we're very fortunate that we got caught in a year where we lost a lot of juniors we brought in freshmen they were able to pitch early to get experience and then you added a couple more quality arms you know into the mix and then everybody just happens to be so young you know the two freshmen uh then you also end up with uh, you know the guys that were freshmen last year that are just sophomores so so then you got, you know, Eric Carter and Zom Breaker that are seniors and Bazaar's in his draft year, his junior year. So you got some of those guys. Sharp is back with us. Um, and then we, you know, uh, Donald Como is going to redshirt with us. And, uh, you know, Jacob Norman's going to redshirt with us. They're two very good arms that um, just right now are a little tick below where, where a freshman would need to be in this kind of rotation. But. You know, you also can't get ahead of yourself, too, because, you know, as I tell the, 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 the our players all fall, you know, people talk about pitching and pitching and pitching, and, you know, you give up one run and the world's fall. And, you know, I mean, this is, you know, college baseball. You're going to give up some runs. I mean, you, it's something that uh, we're very fortunate to have the depth. The next thing comes in is being able to manage that depth and make sure that, they share, you know, I mean, the old years where Atlanta was so good, they used that positively. Each one of them wanted to go back out the next day and do better than the guy in front of him. And that's what we kept preaching all fall. You know, we're going to have to share. Um, you know, somebody's innings could be limited, but now let the quality of your work go up. You know, if, if the quantity might come down a little bit because we're going to share, but that's hopefully a good thing because We'll have good starting pitching, which is which is a big big plus, and hopefully we don't have to ride somebody so hard to where you know their knuckles aren't dragging the ground by the time we end end up in the regionals or the super regionals. Well, that um, I was going to ask another question, but you just led me into uh, into something a little bit different. You talk about riding a guy really really hard, and and you know maybe toward the end of the year he's. He doesn't have a whole lot left in the tank. And, and when I when I hear that, when I talk about that, the first guy I think of is Nick Thurman, mm -hmm. who uh, who had to catch a lot of innings last year. You only had two uh, on the roster. Evan Powell was hurt a good part of the year. So it was uh, it was Thurman and Thurman and Thurman and Thurman and Thurman. And, and, uh, and I think it probably bit him offensively toward the end of the year because he struggled uh, swinging the bat. You said... Behind him this year, you're very, very young. So um, did you have a conversation with any of your other catchers and said, dude, could you please grow up between now and February? Well, that's what we want to do. You know, we're trying to get Ryan Ray, the freshman, to, to grow up. And uh, we also believe, um, you know, if you watch the amount of catching they do at the big league level, those guys do some catching, the frontline catchers. So it's not something that's not done, you know, um, uh, and I think having to have done it the year before, I think he's got a better idea now of, 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 you know, they, they say that, you know, when you go to rookie ball and you play short season, then you go back the next year and you play 132. They say that that next year is usually your best year because now you know the rigors of that 132 when you didn't know that before because you played half of that 
here sleeping in your own bed playing college baseball. But now you got the other half of that playing on the road and pro ball. So I think Nick's going to be better because I think he'll, he'll understand what he went through. He knows now how to be prepared. I think he also, we told him to be able to speak up along the way and say, Hey, you know, I know you're a competitor. I know you're a warrior. I know you want to play in every inning, but you know, at the big league level, sometimes they'll say, Hey, skip, you know, can I get a night off? You know, I mean, whatever the case may be, we'll watch him uh, because we also want to groom Ryan Ray too along the way. You always have, um, it, it's a, I've always found this to be very, very interesting about the way you run your club. You have a questionnaire that you hand out at the end of fall practice. And there are about 16,000 questions um, <laughs> on, that, on that questionnaire. But they're very probing questions, yes. too. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, and uh, they are questions, you know, uh, who do you want to... Who do you want to be standing next to uh, when the, you know, I, I don't want to say when the bullets start flying because that's not, that's not really fair to those who serve. But, understand. Um, but who do you want, you know, next to you at that time? Who don't you want next to you at that time? Who's the hardest worker? Who's the laziest guy on this team? You ask questions like that. You keep the answers um, confidential mm-hmm. as far as who's saying what. Right. But but in your exit meetings, you've got a chance to sit here and say, look, obviously you've done a good job leading because because, look, we've got uh, of the people they said, who do you want standing next to you? You got more votes than anybody else. So you've done a good job leading and keep that up. Yes. Uh, conversely, uh, if, if the if the news hasn't been good, that's uh, that's a pretty good way to get a point across uh, as well. Did anything surprise you this fall? Not really. You know, every I've been doing this for a, a long, long time, long yeah. time. And, and I know one thing to be true is that uh, the form doesn't lie uh, because it's voted on by the teammates. Um, and it gives them one last opportunity as a team to say what needs to be said. A lot of times today, because of everything trying to be politically correct, nobody says what needs to be said anymore. And because of that, it's very hard for a kid to make a change if nobody's telling him what to do. <clears throat> if I tell him all the time, then he pulls his swords out and it becomes coach don't like me situation. Sure. But it's a lot easier when you turn the table on him and say that 22 of your teammates believe that you're lazy. Now, what are we going to do about it? Uh, it's hard for him to say, well, you know, <clears throat> they must have just saw me maybe not run out of ball one day. You know, I don't think 22 people are going to comment off of that. You know, we've got a question on there who <clears throat> who uh, represents us the best off campus, uh, who represents us off campus in the worst way. So there's some very poignant questions on there. And we try to go through all those questions and have somebody go home for the holidays and give themselves a Christmas gift if it's hustle, if it's if it's get clean your nightlife up, it, whatever it is, they 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 pretty much have an ultimatum to get that taken care of because the team's not going to tolerate it anymore. So that we don't have to get in the middle of the season and find all this out. I'd much rather find all that out before we go home for the Christmas break. When when did uh, <clears throat> when did you decide? When in your career did you decide decide that you were going to do this questionnaire thing at the end of fall? Uh, about 20, 20 something years ago. Oh, this was like early. Oh yeah. 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 Because I subscribe to the theory that, you know, in corporate America, and that's what we're trying to get them prepared for is in life in corporate America. But in corporate America, you're going to be evaluated. I mean, you're going to go through a three month evaluation period or a weekly or a monthly or a six month or something. You're going to be evaluated. And I want them to learn that one, I don't want you to fear evaluation because I've got an old theory that you can't, everybody knows where they want to go, but they, they don't know where they're at. And so if you, we, the example I give is like the mall, you know, if you go into a mall in Houston and you saw there was a Dillard's driving up, <clears throat> but you can't get to it, you know, it's in there. So you go up to this board and on the board, there's an arrow, a dot, and it says you are here. And so now that you found out where you are, you can now get to get to where you want to be. Well, most people in life ultimately want to get where they want to be, but they, they, they don't want to find out where they are. And they're too protective over that, you know, and some people have fear evaluation. So <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to get them ready. It's like Justin, he went in for his uh, six weeks evaluation or whatever. So the guy sits down with him and says, man, I'm, 
I don't have a whole lot. I got to kind of apologize to you. You know, your drug test is positive and, you know, your dress code's good. And, you know, usually I got five or six or seven things on somebody's first evaluation. He said, man, my dad did that to me a long time ago. <laughs> and, and, and so we want them to be prepared for that evaluation when they get into corporate America. So we, we tell them <clears throat> we're using it for a couple of different reasons. We got to find out where you are, not where we think you are. And there's no better place to find that out instead of just asking the team. And and we we don't tell them who said what because that would start infighting. Sure. But but we compile everything and we go over that with them. And it also, you know, everybody has a tendency to look at it and go, oh, boy, that's negative. It's not. We also get a chance to say, hey, man, under the who would senior is the most respected, you're the most respected senior. Um, it's got questions like who helped you the most since you've been here. And we'll say, hey, man, we really appreciate you helping this freshman because he was lost and he went to you. So so and then there's a lot of guys that don't realize that the team does think highly of them. You know what I'm saying? They might be an introverted, shy kid and think don't not not know that. Well, we want him to know that so that he can keep coming and, and say something. They do respect you. I mean, say something when it needs to be said. You know, don't feel you can't. They respect you. So so it's not just a negative form. It, it just it's just a lot comes out in. It that we compile, and then we have 44. This year we had 44 guys in the roster, so we had 44 30-minute meetings. And 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 I think you have to care about your people. I think you have to communicate to them on what you need them to do and what you need them to become, because I think they're confused today. Because I think society is a big lie. It 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 it, 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 it misleads them on what a real man is. It misleads them on some things and and what leadership is. And I think you have to communicate to them. And we we try to stamp all that out. And I'm telling you, we release kids according to that form. That. They just, it's not a fit. They, they, they've either hurt us off campus or the team just doesn't want them in the locker room. Uh, I think that's important. I mean, uh, I think that, that you know, because building team chemistry is, is, is so important and it's not an easy thing to do. And, boy, without it, uh, it can take a good team down. To, um, team chemistry is something uh, that you and I have talked about, gosh, for as long as you've been here in, in interviews uh, that we've done. And I... Um, there haven't been, at least in my view, there haven't been a ton of teams that you've had where chemistry's been an issue. Usually your chemistry's been okay. Some have been better than others. Mm -hmm. But but I, I don't remember, too, that, that you said, boy, you know, our chemistry sucked on this team. I really don't remember that uh, uh, happening uh, a whole lot. I got to believe that... Um, that this this form is one of the reasons why because you've been able to go ahead and maybe get rid of problems before problems happen. Well, that's what we try to do. That's what we what we ultimately want to do is, and we want to hear from the team. And look, you got to go through it and realize that if a guy gets one lazy vote, <clears throat> you don't go run the guy off. No, you know, if a guy gets thirty seven lazy votes, I don't, I don't, I don't think he. You know, I mean, I think there's an issue. Um, if a guy gets 37 votes that this guy represents us the worst off campus, I think we got to have a talk. So, so, but you're right. We try to, we try to get rid of all of that and not assume it because there's times you can assume something. We're not with them every day. We can be easily fooled. Um, but you can't fool your teammates. Um, they, they know. And, um, and I respect the team because they, they fill it out. I mean, it's not Johnny Tattletale. It's it's like I tell them, do you care about your organization enough? Do you, do you want to be stuck in late April and May and be having a bad year and have somebody on the team go, you know what, well, it's this guy and this guy. Well, if you knew that all the way back at, at Christmas, why don't we handle this now so we don't have to handle it in April and May? You're going to suffer, too. If you don't speak up, you're going to suffer because if we can't pull this thing together as a team, I don't care how good we are, we're not going to win. And baseball is a unique sport because only nine guys out of 35 hit the field. I don't have a, a punt return guy. I can stick on a punt return team like Coach Hood or stick a guy on the, you know, the, the, the kickoff team, let him just run down there and hit somebody and say, boy, I played tonight. We, we play nine guys out of 35. So we've got so much of the team that goes home disappointed every night, even though we win, that they didn't play. So, boy, it's it's so hard. you got to really get them to understand that I'm to be willing to play a small part of something big instead of a big part of something small. 
And that's that's not an easy thing to do. And that's what we try to do with this forum is go through all the problems, all the issues. And then we tell them, too, if you don't have anything to say, then when you walk out of here, shut your mouth. I mean, here's your say so right here. Shut up. There's nothing bothers me more than having a team meeting. Nobody raises their hand. Then you walk out the door and two of them are yip yapping in the corner of the locker room about somebody else on the team. If you don't have the guts enough to put it on paper, then shut up. I mean, here's your say so. And after today, just shut your mouth. I mean, don't even open it because here's your say so. Here's your chance to handle up on what we got to handle up on. If not, then, then shut up. It's like people that don't vote, but yet, you know, walk around yip yap and shut up. I mean, and that's my whole thing with the form is that it's not we, we introduce it. It tends it, it takes me 30 minutes to introduce it because the new players, I don't want them to have fear of, you know, somebody finding out what they said. We separate them to where nobody can look off each other's paper when they fill it out. Um, we make sure that they clearly understand what this is for. It's your it's your chance to have a say so about your team. Where do you well, we'll ask other questions like what does this team lack? What does this team lack to win a championship? You know, and we'll type all that up and we'll go over it as a team and we'll try to start attacking these areas because evidently this is what the team sees is is going to be our chance. It's not foolproof. It's not 100 percent. I mean, uh, you know, it's 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 but but I tell you what, it gives us a good starting point and, and, a, and a good dialogue in exit meetings. Think about this. You can have 44 30 minute meetings and you're going to have all that on what you think. I mean, what if I'm wrong? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I sense this kid to be this, but maybe maybe he's not. I don't know. So let's let the team tell us how how, how it looks. We we even tell them to pick the starting lineup. If you think you should be in it, put yourself in it. We ask them questions like, where do you see yourself opening day? We ask them questions like, when you go bad, how can you still help us win? We'll ask them to go into Omaha tonight. We need to know who to put on the mound. Tell me who you'd want on the mound tonight. Or we got the bases loaded in two outs. What hitter would you like to have up the plate at that time? And we compile all this information, and it just helps us try to get to see how the team sees things. Tony Robichaud, our guest um, here on Bird's Eye View this afternoon. Uh, I, I told you, you know, it's it's nice when I can give you a piece of information you don't know. It Ford doesn't happen very often, but uh, I read uh, a tweet from uh, Kendall Rogers from uh, D1 Baseball. Um, oh, maybe about 10 minutes before you got here, um, announcing that uh, all of the games in the Houston College Classic are going to be televised by the MLB network. That doesn't suck. No. That's, uh, the, no. you know, you're, and, and, and by the way, um, folks, the, the Cajuns, are, it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Cajuns will play TCU on Friday, Texas Tech on Saturday, Rice on Sunday. They'll play the uh, middle game on Friday, the early game on Saturday, the late game on Sunday, just to just to let you know. And, of course, you know, we've still got a couple of months before this happens. And so we'll be reminding folks and you'll be able to check our website and everything else uh, for that. Um, nice year to get invited if um, if you're going to get on nationwide television watched not by sports fans, but by baseball people. Well, no. And, and, and to be on the Major League Baseball Network, I mean, that's. You know, that's the epitome of baseball right there. And, and, and to be in such a great venue, some of our players will never get to a big league stadium, even though they play pro ball. They may never get to a big league stadium. I think the location is so good for our fans. Uh, we have so many Cajun fans in the Houston area, and we've, and we've been able to play well in the Houston area. You know, last year winning the Houston Regional, being on TV, and this year getting three more chances. Look, our, our, our early season schedule is salty. I mean, with, with Coach Deggs coming in here for three and then heading to that classic. I mean, we're going to, we're going to be pushed early, and, and that's going to be good for us, too, because we, we need that. You know, I mean, we, we, everybody assumes you start off where you left off the season before. That's a fallacy. You know, we're not. And so we, we, we need to be pushed around many times this fall. Um, you know, I've looked in front of them with an article about uh, how, you know, this pitching staff is so good or this, and I tear it up in front of their face, you know, every time and tell them that, you know, we're entitled to nothing and, and that, that this first run opening weekend and the weekend after is going to be very difficult. And if you read in, which, which is in the paper, you're going to, you're going to get yourself killed. So we keep trying to get them to understand that, uh, you know, we're entitled to nothing. What we did last year is last year. That means nothing 
this year. Um, you're, you, you talked about your schedule, and it's, uh, it was worked out to where, you know, that there's one team that you normally play a couple of midweek games with, and that's southeastern Louisiana, and it worked out. You guys had a bye week in the same week. So you've taken your midweek series, made it a weekend series. You're going to play three games, and that kind of gave you a couple of extra midweek dates to fill, and you did a nice job of filling them. You're going to make a, a trip up to Ruston to play Louisiana Tech yep. uh, and a midweek game over to southern Mississippi to go along with LSU and two for 30 to be the maximum and then from there even maybe look at maybe look at less you know where you rotate somebody maybe off the schedule or something let us have another open weekend in the front of the season get rid of the buys and try to get to maybe Ole Miss for a three-game series or get to get to somewhere nearby on the road for a three-game series and try to really protect our RPIs. Um, Tony Robichaux is our guest. Uh, a few more things to, uh, to bring up when we come back. Sports Gap this afternoon at 4. 